and have a discussion on any matter whatsoever which arises from the conduct of the case. The law does not permit that. Actually, if I did that, the accused before court here, they could bring an application for my recusal because they wouldn't be present in that meeting which the Black Lawyers Association wants to have with me. They could even also apply for the quashing of the proceedings on the basis that they are unconstitutional upon me having entertained a discussion with a legal fraternity body. So that is the reason. But me, on reflection, and after some thoughts, I admit that my comments could be interpreted as intemperate, ill-advised, ill-considered, and offensive. And if that is the perception of the accused and their representatives and persons outside, even the, the public and the, the BLA, then I want to state that I unreservedly, without any conditions, withdraw the comments which I made in that Wednesday afternoon because of the events that played out here. And also, if I caused any offense to any person or organization, I also unreservedly apologize. And I also apologize also to the judge president of this division, Mr. Mlambo, and the DJP of this division, Mr. Aubrey Letuaba, and if needs be also the Chief Justice, the judiciary, my colleagues, and even the Judicial Service Commission. And as an aside, the irony is the BLA, I, together with the late Godfrey Piche, Gikham Seneke, Sien Mushidi, Makambeni from Pretoria, Toli Vilagazi, Tansi, I think we were about 10. We conceptualized in 1977, 50 years ago, when the spirit of black consciousness was pervading the country, we conceptualized and formed the Black Lawyers Association. And I can brag a bit and say, I was in the steering committee. I and Musenike drafted the constitution. So I've been a member of the Black, Conscious, Black Lawyers Association since 1977 for the uninitiated. Okay. They're free, the Black Press Association is free to write to the JP and discuss the matter. But as far as I'm concerned, that is the end of the matter. Except that Mr. Mgumezulu has written a letter of apology. Should I read it, sir? That's correct. Should I read it? Yes, please. Otherwise, I was just going to keep it to myself. <coughs> okay, here's the letter. It's dated the 20th March, 2024, at 1621. Good day, Judge Mufati. The above matter refers Senzo Maiwa made a trial, Pretoria High Court, not right, not outing. I write this email to express my apology for my non-appearance in court. I had discussions with my colleagues last Friday whereby I asked Advocate Munyeki to stand in for me during the testimonies of Ms. Matapi and the photographer. The request was adhered to by Advocate Munyeki. On Monday, I asked Mr. Ramosipiri to stand in for me and he agreed in the presence of other counsels. 
I received instructions on an urgent basis between wherein 74 motor vehicles were impounded, repossessed by the company called Bike Automatic Automobile SA Pty Ltd. I took this opportunity because I was not receiving fees for the past five months and Legal Aid South Africa declined to pay. I need to close the unpaid school fees for my daughter and my two sons and my house bond. Today at 16.15 I called Mr. Baloi. He did not answer my call, but due to his professionalism he returned my call and we had a discussion. However, before Advocate Baloi returned my call, I called Rast Ramos Lipiri and sent him a WhatsApp message, but he did not respond. Furthermore, I called Advocate Mushololo, who also did not answer my call, but showed professionalism by retaining my call at 9.30. I then asked her to speak to Ms. Selepe, whom I conveyed the message for the judge. I attempted to call the secretary, Ms. Rose Selepe, and I left a message. I do not have anything against your leadership. Since I have known you from Clemson House, I was on the fourth floor with Norman Masanabo, the late. I did not receive the transcript of the main trial, and I have not consulted with accused one. I ran a trial within a trial without going through the evidence of the main trial, and I'm proceeding <coughs> with the main trial only with 636 stroke 10 stroke 2014 disclosure. That is the case. I have noticed that other councils are offered assistance if they're engaged somewhere else, but different situation in, in my case. Kindly find room to accept my apology. I do not have any vendetta against your lordship. Regards to Lani Ngumezu. Okay. That's nice. Thanks. I regard the matter as closed. Yes, Mr. Baloi. Manje Yoboba Banga Pango would be Snagala. In Ganton is Okumbulu would be in a Jablanga or to Nomzan Gomezu or Aflang in Ganton. Manje in Gandolo eat it lock or mine up because we say Unoma or bad. So it here called this. Yegan Sakumanga, Boring Kelabante, good thing can dollar say Bashi. Manja Nomnums and Ungo Mezulu, Sanda Kodisa, Galen Wat Le Funda in Gandolo Manj. Uti Ulel Kala, Safiso Uti Akbege, Futi Alana, your Indo Eguti, Impetegabi, Uguya Galenzela Eguti in Gandolo Egate Kulmena Corner, Galogutis Nakbega, Gandolo Nayo Iti Lelo Tala, Lelo Tabala, Langolas Tatu Ialvala, Sugutis Yakubega Geta. As the court yeah. okay, yes, Mr. As a court please, before calling this witness, I just want to amplify the relevance of this witness um, evidence. Yeah. My Lord, this witness works for the Road Traffic Management Corporation as an investigator. He has access to what is known as the NATIS system. Okay. Th this is the National Traffic Information System. Mm. Now, the National Traffic Information System contains particulars of the registers, registered owners of motor vehicles. Mm. It gives their contact details. It also gives their addresses. Now, this witness is going to testify about the um, computer-generated extracts from the NATIS system. And my Lord, the sole purpose of presenting this evidence is to refute the version of accused number one. Um, this witness is going to testify that and, and, and show those extracts of the application that was made by accused number one for a learner license. And this information was then captured on the NATIS system. Mm. And, and as I've intimated, my Lord, um, this is to refute the version of the following version of accused number one. During the evidence of Mr. <coughs> Zungu, 
as a Zungu on the 8th of September 2023, page 27 to 28. The following was put by Mr. Ramosepeli, and I'm going to refer to line 18. Mr. Ramosepeli, accused one will state that in 2013 until March 2013, he was staying in Foslores Hostel at Basituni section but when he lost employment in March 2013, he returned home and stayed home until he returned again to stay with his uncle in Tembisa in 2015. Uh, then proceeding to page 28, uh, Mr. Ramosepili then asked Mr. Zungu to comment. Uh, then Mr. Zungu says the following, I would not know where he was working when he lost his employment. We have never discussed that. Now, my Lord, the following is very important. Mr. Ramosepili says the following. The basis of that proposition to you is essentially this, that since March 2013, he has never returned to Johannesburg or Gauteng until 2015. Uh, that is the nub of the uh, matter, my lord. And the state will then present evidence via this witness that shows that um, accused number one did apply for a learner license in person at Brackburn Drivers License Testing Center. And the acronym DLTC is often used on the 17th of July, 2014, that he then undertook the, the uh, learner's test on the 22nd of July, 2014, but unfortunately he did not make it. That he then, on the same day, the 17th of July, 2014, I'm sorry, on the 22nd of July, 2014, made another appointment at the Boxback License, uh, License Testing Center, Boxback DLTC. As I indicated, this is now on the 22nd of July, 2014. And he then secured an appointment for the 15th of September 2014 to sit for the learner license. And that on the 15th of September 2014, he then passed his learner's. I'm not sure if the it's giving evidence. state is leaving evidence. Yeah, it's, <coughs> he says he's, he's telling the court and even you as counsels what he intends leading this witness upon. Yes. So the evidence will be led according to him by Mr. The same name, by the way, Mr. It's <coughs> Mr. Matlo. 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 M-A-T-L-O-U, Matlo. Yeah, Matlo. You know the Matou, who was a member of the Gang of Eight? Oh, you don't know him? Okay, no, fine. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. The, there is, there's an objection there. Yeah, yes, my lord. I, I, as I said, you know, I'm just with a broad brush, just outlining the relevance of this witness uh, evidence. And I, 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 I've covered that aspect. Uh, I'm not going to go into that. Okay. And we'll then refer to Section 17 of the National Road Traffic Act, 93 of 96, that says a person must apply for a learner license in person. 
as there's a certain questionnaire <coughs> that the applicant must complete regarding the, 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 the health status. Now, during his evidence, my Lord, we also traverse the um, certain infringement notices that were issued to some of the uh, accused. And the sole purpose thereof, my Lord, is simply to show that the accused were stopped whilst driving the particular motor vehicles by a traffic officer. <laughs> Sorry, my Lord, I'm going to do the same objection that my little colleague. Yes. Yeah, maybe, maybe yes, did they? Yes, yes. 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 Uh, as I say, uh, I, I foresee that there'll be an objection, and I'm just trying to explain the reason why, uh, and just so that everybody can <coughs> follow the evidence, my Lord. Uh, this is not giving evidence, I'm just outlining the evidence so that everybody can follow it. Uh, What's your objection, Mr. Ramosepidi? My Lord, the summation that my learned colleague is giving comes from the affidavit of the witness. Is the witness so? uh, will, will testify about that. Is it's that so? I've read the affidavit, my Lord. So what's the problem? I thought you didn't know what this witness was going to say. But should no, you know what this witness is going to shouldn't say? Shouldn't the evidence come from the witness? No, no, I'm saying... I do know. You know? Yes. Okay. They say they know. Uh, I'm almost done, my Lord. <laughs> uh, and, and the state is then, as far as this computer-generated printouts are concerned, the state will be relying on um, the, the act that governs the, uh, the printouts and it's the Electronic Communications and Transactions Act 25 of 2002. There's also a decided case, my lord, of uh, Njovu versus Minister of uh, Correctional Services. The decision, decision of the then uh, Widwater's Rent Local Division given by um, Judge Gauchi. Is totally wrong. Mr. Maloy, uh, my colleague, Advocate Maloy, just needs to read this witness. In an event mm -hmm. that there's an objection, then he can respond. It yeah. is unnecessary for him now to even before this witness begin to provide testimony to refer this court to a particular authority. Okay, okay. That will only come if and when there's an objection with regard to the testimony of this witness. Okay. Otherwise, the presence of this witness here it will be rendered very nugatory if Mr. Valoy persists. Yeah, that. but that's not evidence. Anyway, just did the witness. Uh, so uh, the witness in. Uh, uh, as a court, please, my lord, can I just make this point? In terms of section 150 at the beginning of the of, yeah, you, of, 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 of you relay the state the can lay out mm, yeah, I know the that. basis of the case and during the presentation of mm. the evidence of any witness, there's mm. nothing that stops Maybe let's read section 150. 150. Let's read uh, it. Yes, but because maybe some of us don't know it. That, that relates mainly to the opening statement. Yes, yes, I know. Um, <sighs> right. Uh, the section reads as follows. <coughs> Prosecutor may address court and adduce evidence. There's a heading. The prosecutor may at any trial before any evidence is adduced mm. address the court for the purpose of explaining the charge and indicating without comment to the court what evidence he intends adducing in, su in support of the charge. Then subsection two, the prosecutor may then examine the witness for the prosecution and adduce evidence as may be admissible to prove that the accused committed the offense referred to in the charge or that he committed an offense of which he may be now convicted that's enough. of the that's charge. Enough. Yes. The first portion covers, covers what you're yes. saying. Is that not so, Mr. Ramosipir? Hello? <coughs> Section 150 covers what this gentleman has been saying. He'll try and lead the following evidence. My, my, my understanding of the section, uh, unfortunately, this is written in a very small faint. It says, uh, without comment to the court, what evidence? No, no, start the section from where it starts. Okay. The prosecutor may at any 
trial right. before any evidence is uh, adduced, address the court for the purposes of explaining the charge and, indi in, and indicating without comment to the court uh, what evidence he intends adducing in support of the charge. Mm. Without commenting, mm. that's what I'm underlining, my lord. And also, this process is done at the commencement of the trial, not when a witness is seated before court. Okay, okay. Yes, uh, 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 I'm done, my lord. Just yeah. outlining. I was just showing the relevance of. Okay, right, quite, quite. Yeah, thank you. <coughs> Your full name is the name. I'm to be Christopher Batlow. Do you have any objection in taking the prescribed oath? I have no objection. If you do not have, do you swear that the evidence you shall give shall be the truth, the whole truth, nothing else but the truth? If you do swear, please raise your right hand and say, so help me God. So help me God. Witness son in my Lord. Please come to the front. My Lord, this witness is going to make use of uh, his affidavits. He has made two affidavits and He's going to refer to um, his affidavits, my lord. Uh, this will be in terms of the section 212, subsection 3 of the Criminal Procedure Act. And section, if my learned friend can just give me time to finish, as well as uh, section 15 of the Electronic Communication and Transaction. Act yeah, 25 okay. of 2002. 25 of 2002. Yes. Mm. Section 15. <coughs> yes, Mr. Ngamal. My Lord, I have a problem because when, when my colleague uh, addressed the court, he referred to accused number one. Hence, this uh, evidence, the evidence of this witness also relates to my client, of which, my, my Lord, I object on the basis that the evidence that is going to be tendered by this witness in respect of my client is irre irrelevant. It does not address the core issues in this case. Hence, we are dealing with the matter in relation to the five counts as per the indictment. Thank you. You say the evidence you want to adduce from this? Maybe, my daughter, um, I do not intend to, to hijack the stage. Um, Mr. Valeri, in his address, informed the court that the testimony of this witness will only have an effect on accused number one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you said so. Thank you, my friend. Yeah. Yes. Are you going to no, also need no. evidence against no. accused number four? No, no. Uh, I'm actually taken aback at these objections. Yeah. I was interrupted, my lord, when I was still trying oh, to apply going to to number four. the relevance of the evidence. Okay. Now, they are saying the relevance hasn't been shown when they stopped me from showing the relevance. It's yeah, uh, but, uh, no, 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 just but, listen to me. But, but you intend leading evidence against number four? All, all the accused, my Okay, all the accused. Fine. Yes, let's, all let's, the accused. Let's, let's start, please. Regarding the cell phone numbers, yeah, fine. that links up with the evidence of uh, Colonel Stain, as, as well as the addresses that they gave. Okay. Because if the, if the evidence is irrelevant, you counsel, through cross examination, you will demonstrate that. If he says the rain falls mainly on the plains of Ikobo, and for the past hundred years there was no rain there. That's it. Yes. Yes, let's, let's, let's continue. As a God please, my Lord. As I've indicated, the witness has made two um, statements which are covered in terms of section 212. Yeah. Subsection three, three of the Criminal Procedure Act, right. um, as well as Section 15 of the Electronic Communications Act okay. that, that I've referred to, my Lord. Okay. Thank you. The witness is also going to make use of um, the screen to do his presentations. Okay. Um, if, if the system allows it, you will uh, drill into the um, NATI system and and to, just to demonstrate his uh, his evidence. Okay, fine. And perhaps for the convenience of the court, we've also pre 
um, back leave to hand the two affidavits that he's going to use um, just to make it easier for the court to follow the evidence as well. Thanks. Sure. There's also my lord uh, Volkswagen Polo that featured in the confessions. Um, the evidence of this witness will traverse a, a, a vehicle of that make, my lord. Okay. Nale moto EVW ebu kunyo nga yonga les katibu konyuluga. Utwa na yo ubufagas bayo buzo bonagaliswa ubuti leo modwe gabani e ani niganjalo. Bonge ubufagas baki bukaza imini nwani yonke yomundu oge wa sebenzi sa i license noma umundu osha ila. He has been so yes. yes. Mr. Mato, is it correct? Yes, my lord. That you have prepared two affidavits that I want to show you uh, the first one consists of 22 pages and this uh, I've got an objection, I, I, I think I can't allow this to continue on a bit. Yeah, what's the objection? Mr. Baloy, even before this witness starts to testify, he, ends, he, 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 ends, he, he hands in an affidavit that is purported to have been written by this witness. Now, a section 212 affidavit simply replaces the oral testimony of this witness. But if the witness is there, then there's no need for that 212 affidavit unless Mr. Baloyi intends to introduce to the court, even before the testimony of this witness, the, 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 the documents as annexed charts that are attached to the affidavit. But the affidavit itself should not be handed over to the court when the witness is here. Yes, Mr. Baloyi, what do you say? <laughs> well, my lords... Um, two and two, what does two and two uh, say? Yeah, uh, I, I should maybe um, <laughs> read, read section two and two, uh, subsection three. And it reads as follows. Whenever in criminal proceedings, yes. the question arises whether any matter has been registered under any law or whether any fact or transaction has been recorded there under or whether anything connected therewith has been done there under a document purporting to be an affidavit made by the person who in that affidavit alleges that he is the person upon whom the law in question confers the powers or imposes the duty to register such matter or to report such fact or transaction or to do anything connected therewith and that he has registered the matter in question or that he has recorded the facts or transaction in question or that he has done the thing connected therewith or that he has satisfied himself that the matter in question or that he has done the thing connected therewith or that he has satisfied himself that the matter in question was registered or that or that the effect or transaction in question was recorded or that the thing connected therewith was done shall upon its mere production at such proceedings be prima facie proof that such matter was registered or as the case may be that such fact or transaction was recorded or that the thing connected therewith was done mm. uh, but there's nothing my lord that stops the, uh, the the affidavit is 
by mere production admissible, but there's nothing that stops the state to lead viva voca evidence. This happened with the pathologist. There was no objection when the pa pathologist yeah. Malot read his affidavit in the in the record. And just and there's a difference, uh, Malot. This witness is not an expert. Well, it's just a witness that comes from inatives. He's not an expert. <laughs> So that's the difference are, are you, between are the you, are you agreeing that this witness is not an expert? Well, the state is going to contend that he's an expert on okay. the inartist system. The contend is an expert. Yeah, he's an investigator attached to the RTMC and that um, he's an expert on uh, the inartist system. But Yeah, you can bring evidence to dispute that. Yes. Um, no problem. Can I also perhaps just for clarity also put section 15 of the um, Electronic Communication Act on, on record so that we are all on the, um, on, 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 on the same page. And it reads as follows, admissibility and evidential weight of data messages. Mm and data messages my lord is defined in section one um, as data generated sent received or stored by electronic means and includes a voice where the voice is used in an automated transaction and b this is the one that we are relying on a stored record now, the, the section itself reads as follows, section uh, 15. The heading is admissibility and evidential weight of data messages. Subsection 15.1. In any legal proceedings, the rules of evidence must not be applied so as to deny the admissibility of a data message in evidence. A on the mere ground that it is constituted by a data message or B, if it is in the best evidence, or sorry, if it is the best evidence that the person <coughs> adducing it could reasonably be expected to obtain on the grounds that it is not in its original form, subsection two, information in the form of data message must be given due evidential weight. Subsection 3, in assessing the evidential weight of a data message, regard must be had to A, the reliability of the manner in which the data message was generated, stored, or communicated. B, the reliability of the manner in which the integrity of the data message was maintained. C, the manner in which its originator was identified, and D, any other relevant factor. Then lastly, sub, uh, subsection four, a data message made by a person in the ordinary course of business, or a copy, or printout, printout of or an extract from such data message certified to be correct by an officer in the service of such person is on its mere production in any civil, criminal, administrative, or disciplinary proceedings under any law, the rules of self-regulatory organization, or any other law or the common law admissible in evidence against any person and rebuttable proof of the facts contained in such record, copy, printout, or extract. That, that is section 15. Okay. If we can then maybe uh, proceed with the evidence of the witness. Yes, let's hear you. Uh, um, Mr. Mato, um, if indicated that you've deposed to two affidavits regarding the matter, is that correct? That is correct, my lord. Yes, 
I just want to show you your first affidavit consisting of 22 pages. Um, and if I can draw your attention to the last page, page 22 of that affidavit. See again, go page 22, your affidavit. Or maybe if we can start at page 21. Go page 21. There's a signature there. Whose signature is it? It's my signature, my lord. And the next page, page 22, the affidavit was, com was uh, commissioned, is that correct? That is correct, my lord. What is the date thereof? The 9th of October, 2023. Go page 22, we have October, Are you the one who prepared this affidavit? Yes, my lord. confirm that? When I want to open the affidavit to Tiebo. Do you confirm its correctness? Yes, my lord. If I can draw your attention to the next affidavit that consists of 27 pages. The next affidavit that consists of 27 pages. I see a affidavit in my page out 27. If I can ask you to refer to page 25 of 27. Then I page 25. There appears a signature there. Mm. Whose signature is it? It's my signature, my lord. Wouldn't a signature la Gabano Teyami? And the following page 26 and 27, the affidavit was commissioned, is that correct? Yes, my lord. And what is the date on which it was commissioned? 23rd of September. La which year? 2023, my lord. The affidavit guna la puti ya kushizwa istembe ya commissioniwa uti yebo ni ni uti nge 23, it's September nyage. But we will return to these two affidavits uh, just in a, in a while. Um, if you can just yes, put the court, my lord. Mm -hmm. Before this witness starts to say his testimony, I'd like to place it on record that this affidavit were already commissioned on the 9th of September 2023. The other one was commissioned on 22 September 2023, last year. We only received this information on Thursday, I mean on on Wednesday. Also love the state to put it on record why from 23 September 2023 and 9 uh, October 2023 this information was not made available to us. I'm there from those pages. I would object that this information, uh, that this witness should be proceeded with unless the state brings out reasons why this information was not disclosed then. Otherwise, this will constitute a trial by ambush. It constitutes a trial that is not fair to this accused person. The state has been in possession of this document for almost six months, if my, if my calculations are, are correct. You only gave them to us on Wednesday. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Well, look, I, I really do not wish to cast suspicions on my colleagues, but this thing of, you know, I've given you documents and they say they haven't received it. My Lord, last year, before we started with the evidence of the tracker expert, I personally came to this court, found my colleagues sitting here in court consulting, and I gave them this um, affidavit. There's two affidavits. Yeah, um, I, I remember in particular the, the one affidavit, my lord. I, I'm not so too sure about it. Last year, too. Yes, last year. Now and, they say they got them Thursday. And out of courtesy, my lord, just yeah. out of sheer courtesy, because we know that these things are misplaced, we then gave them again the same affidavit when? that I personally gave to them here in court last year. Um, 
uh, I think Mr. Dupree's evidence was around um, October, thereabouts. Um, I personally gave them this affidavit. And I, as I say, my Lord, I, I really don't want to enter into a debate where we, um, you know, we cast aspersions at each other, but um, I give my way so to the court. To the state, the court. I did the, the, personally. Personally, gave yes, them last give, year? Yes. Give not Thursday, this. not Thursday. No. Well, Thursday, as I say, just out of courtesy, we Even know that other copies. It, it's a long time ago, and I again gave them this affidavit. And Mr. Mnisi said on, 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 on Wednesday he's ready. He's, he's ready enough to proceed. He on said we must postpone the case to today and not to Monday because he's ready. Now he's ready, he's saying, but he, 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 you know, he didn't have enough time to, to go through the affidavit. As it is the court, man. It's not a matter of trying to cast some aspersions. Yeah. It's a matter of procedure. It is true that on Wednesday, I indicated that we'll be ready to proceed today. But I was not aware that we'll be confronted with information that we should have received already last year. Okay, fine. So and I can tell the court, Mr. Mr. Nisi, that if Mr. my Nisi. memory is not bad, I never yeah, received Nisi, this wait, record. Wait, wait. And I cannot stand up here and mislead the court and say, we did, I did not have this information when I actually received them. Maybe my colleagues received them. I'm speaking on behalf of myself, who's representing accused number three. I never received this information. Sorry, Mr. Did you give it to each and every of yes, the representatives? Yes. Each and every one? Yes. In, the fact, in fact, on that day, the investigating officer personally brought it in the morning. We made copies. Uh. And we then uh, brought the copies along. And she sits here and she can vouch to that, my lord. Is, we is, then that, is that uh, the sergeant? Uh, no. Mohola. Mohola. Yeah, she was in court. Yeah. It looks like oh, she's, she's not here. out. And she's not here. She is yeah. in the court. Oh, okay. You say yeah. she, she brought, she, she brought the, the it documents. to me, yes. She but brought did she it see to you me. when you gave them to each and every one of them? Uh, I cannot remember if she was present, but... You know what my problem is? I've got two officers of the court, or five, six, seven, twenty. They're giving this court two different versions. And we want to <coughs> dignify it by saying we never got this. It means Baloy is lying. If Baloy tells this court that he gave you all this affidavit and you say he never did, it means he is lying. It must be so. What's your problem, sir? My Lord, if I, if I might clarify, uh, without throwing Mr. Baloy and Advocate Nunesi <laughs> under the bus, I, I personally, my Lord, received the one affidavit, not the second affidavit, Where? as Mr. Baloy says, last okay. year. Last year? Right. Yes. So he favors you. He just gives you a loan. And I, he I, I, give that's the why I say I'm not sure about and then other I see comments. you're standing up to yes. you. Yes, I did receive the ticket. Last one. year? Yes, I did. I please. Let's continue this time. Mr. Miss, if you want, if you want time to read these two affidavits, tell this court how many months or years you need so that you postpone, especially for you. Because you say you never received them until Thursday. So, mm -hmm. Mr. Ramosipi, you said you received them last year. Only one, my lord. Fine. Please. Mr. Ngumalo, now you received it last year. I did receive it last year. You wouldn't know, Mr. Mnyeke. No, that I, so? I don't know. But so, you want us to postpone for you, sir? Thank you. I'm, I'm not suggesting any postponement. No, no. You say you haven't had time, in other words, to prepare. No, those are not my words, my lord. I am saying that on account of the fact that these documents were already deposed to last year in but October. But he has explained, Mr. Yes. Uti, he gave them to you last year. He has explained. What more must he say? But I am telling the court as well, Mandot, in yeah. as much as Mr. Baloney So you said, never received them last year? No, I never received Fine. them. Fine. How, 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 how long? Them, how, much time, how, much them, how much time do you need? How much time do you need to read them and prepare? How much time? I'm going to come up with a panacea, which is a universal solution. I don't want to waste this court's time. This witness may proceed to testify, and if there are issues that I think I need to take up with them as they would be affecting Mr. Nube, then I will approach the court with the amount of time that I'm, 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 I may need to go and consult. Didn't you guys have a pre-trial conference? No. Mr. Well, uh, the, the, there was a, a pre-trial conference in Palm Ridge, my lord, oh. where the, mini, the, the matter initially appeared, but none of this 
Defence Council were we, present we were then. Present. Yeah, the, the, there was a different set of um, legal representatives mm. at the time. The call would recall that they only um, yeah. came into the picture mm. after the matter started de novo. Okay, fine. All right, so Mr. Minister, you say this witness can proceed. If there's any issue you want to canvas, you do so. Most definitely. Okay, fine. Okay, let's go on. And even you, Mr. Ramsepi, and Mr. Mgomezo. So, Should this witness continue giving evidence? That's correct. That's correct. That's correct, Madam. Thank you. Hey, Madam. <laughs> yes, sir. Mr. Matlow, where do you work? I'm employed by the Road Traffic Management Corporation. Road Traffic Management Corporation. In what capacity are you employed there? I'm an investigator and I also hold the rank of superintendent in the National Traffic Anti-Corruption Unit, commonly known as NTACO. Manjege wena umsebenzi wako wenza anu uti uya penya futi yena ungu superintendent ningizimi Afrika yom. Hmm. Can you set out your qualifications? My lord, I hold a metric certificate. <coughs> Bachelor of Administration degree. Utu no mate kuteche ni une bachula ya administration. Computer literacy certificate. Na certificate so kwa solo as no computer. Certificate in Forensic and Investigative Auditing. Certificate is so Penya. An Advanced Certificate for fraud in Fraud Examination. Una certificate is in Apezulu, so go Penya, Wamakala, Wogu, Wamakala, Wa Bandu Abaku Pilizayo. I also hold Traffic Officer Diploma. Una Diploma Yama Traffic, Wamapo is our Traffic Cop. My Lord, I'm also certified as fraud examiner by the Association of Certified Fraud Examiners. I'm also a committee member of the Association of Certified Fraud Examiners in Houghton Region. Oye community forty yabantu ababegayo amatala lawa we fraud echaude. That is the summary of my qualification, my lord. Kama fupi bona ubutwe peshbad. Are you also regarded as a peace officer? Yes, my lord. Yeah, I'm, uh, uh, I'm appointed as a peace officer in terms of section 334 of the Criminal Procedure Act, Act number 51 of 1977. I'm also, my lord, appointed as a traffic officer in terms of section 3A of the National Road Traffic Act. Futiena. Uye poisa lomkwa ko logo ogbizwa ama traffic police. Act number 93 of 1996. Ugu yangu mtetos sege no owa kwa 1996. And can you put your experience on record? My, my lord, I was first employed by the Department of Roads and Transport in Limpopo province in February 2008, I was appointed as admin officer assistant. I was attached to Natis Provincial Help Desk. Can you just explain what does the Acronym, acronym NATIS stand for? NATIS is a National Traffic Information System, my lord. 
ukuthi inatis lena yi national traffic information system it's a computerized register which support the national road traffic act the register e ukuthi yona iya ye isebenzisane nalo mthetho wa ma traffic kunya kuningizimi africa yonka right we will revert to the notice uh, just just now um, we can continue with the experience okay my lord i i work my, my duties at the natives provincial help desk were to assist all the driving license testing center in Limpopo province yena umsebenzi wakhe kwakade ku kusiza ama department wonke lawo sebenza ngama driving license in Limpopo my lord i was also introducing legally imported motor vehicles and build up motor vehicle on natives na yefuthi wayekade esiza we moto ebezi kade zingena emzansi Africa zonkana ngakusemthethweni my lord i worked for one year and nine months and after i resigned and joined lepeleng kumbi municipality uye wasebenza unyaka ne ne nyanga ezishaka lolunye mayiqeda wayeka ke lapho umsebenzi wayosebenza elipele ngumbi municipality I was employed by the Pelen Kumpi municipality on November 2009. Kona lapho kulo masipana we Pelen Kumbi uye wasebenza kusukela ngo 2009. My lord I was attached to the Wahomu driving license testing center. Yena ke bambeka ke e driving license testing station yase le Wahomu. One of among my duties my lord was to assist members of the public with the application for learner's license and driving license omunye womsebenzi wakhe bekuwukusiza abantu abantu abazayo naphayana ngokuthi baze bakwazi ukufaka iqelo zama driver's license nama learner's license i was also assisting members of the public my lord particularly those that those that are within the jurisdiction of the municipality with the registration and licensing of motor vehicle where got the ss a 40 nabo abantu abahlala ngakuleyo ndawo le ayichazile nge ngokuthi imoto zabo zize zibhaliswe my lord i worked for one year and nine months for the municipality and i resigned sebenze futhi unyaka ne ne nyanga ezishaka lolunye bese nalapho washiya emsebenzi my lord in august 2011 i was employed by tasima pty ltd ngo august 2011 uye waqashwa yinkampani ebizwa itasima pty ltd my lord the company was contracted with the national department of transport to provide netis to all uh, the provinces on behalf of the department inkampani leyo yona yayikade isebenza ukuthi ithumele noma inikezele imisebenzi leye natis kuma department wonke iningizimu Africa yonke my lord my position was natis critical transaction center officer yena umsebenzi wakhe kwakade kuyi natis critical transaction center officer transaction center officer my lord i was attached to information security service department yena ke ubekade ebekwe ngalana la kuza khona ulwazi bese ke luyagcinwa one of among my, my, my duties my lord was to perform critical notice transaction on behalf of the national department of transport omunye umsebenzi wakhe kwabu ukuthi yena abheke isimo ebesikade sibucayi lapho ngakuyo i notice my lord i was also expected to subscribe to the association of certified fraud examiner by attending seminars and conferences futhi yena wayekade ehamba hamba eya kuyinqungquthela ebesikade abizelwa kuzo my lord i was also expected to identify new trends and pattern of fraudulent activities on natives futhi ke yena wayekade kwamele abheke nokuthi igebengu ziyenzani kuyo inoti inethis izinto ezintsha ezenzwa 
I lot I worked for three years and nine months for for the company. Sebenzele leong kampani minyaga mitatu ne nyanga ezi shaka lulu. I was then employed by the road traffic management corporation. Nyamba wana wakoya na waka shwa yiro traffic management corporation. In May 2015. Ngo May 2015. My lord, my current position is as investigator. Ngo manje umsebenzu wake wukupenya. One of among my other duties is to conduct anti-corruption operation nationally. Omonye umsebenzu wake wukuti ye na apege wukuti aguko izinto ez nga hambi gase u ningizimi Afrika yongadu to prepare necessary investigative reports and documentation my lord for court cases bese yena ubhala ke ama report adingakalayo ukuze alethwe eyinkantolo my lord i'm also investigating fraud and corruption yena uyaye aphenye futhi i fraud nabantu ekuthi abayenzi izinto ngomthetho my lord i also appear and testify in official proceedings Naye uyaye afige azo panango kufagazi kuinda wo ezdisha zifana na azo inkando. My Lord, all in all, I have 16 years of experience working on the National Traffic Information System. Egu tazu gutie na usega ne minyaga eishu menestupa elibele sebenza. That is the summary of my background. Nga mafu upi igona egu gutie na angasazi sawo angaye. Thank you, Mr. Matlu. Can you just explain how does the National Traffic Information System, or NATIS for short, work? My Lord, the National Traffic Information System is a computerized register which supports the National Road Traffic Act. Aye, utaz selege uguti le NATIS ebega do kumanga uguti oni sebenza ganjani uti i ndo uguti ona ihambi selana na umsebenzi lo owa mapoisa awomkwa. Each and every user, my Lord, who have got access to the system must undergo a training. They must also sign the Natchez user undertaker, my Lord. In that undertaker, my Lord, is that you are not allowed to share your password with anyone. La pogu la igu tibona baya saina ba vuma ugu ti i password yabu ngeke ba isebenzi seno munye umunu. And that the information contained in the register is strictly for official purpose. Bese ge baya vuma no ugu ti yonki nto e la pogu yo yona leo system e ya bandu aba sebenza ngayo upe. And that if you are suspect that you are, your password or your NATIS user number is being compromised, you need to immediately alert the security of the NATIS security officer. Futige uma ingabe wena uya kabangela noma ubona ingati i password yako aesasete njiswa wena wedwa wamele ubazi se laba abasebenza ngayo i NATIS. And that you'll be held liable for all the transactions that happen under your user number and the password. No good to foot when a month to law on the way of password. Oh, my goodness, it was as I own Gale password. Yako when a when a over me to pen. My lord, before you get your granted access, there must also be a letter from the institution which confirms that you are employed as such. Napamgo guti wena unganigwa yona leo password noma unagwa zukisebenza lapo Kwa mele utole ubanige ingwati Ebo nisa guti wena nyembela utashwe ganja No one else has got access to NATIS except the authorized users Aksi wongu mundu onayo onalo ikunya lo utanga sebenza in NATIS Napande kwa labo e guti banigwe lelo ku If you say before you're granted access there must be a letter from the association. To which association are you referring to? My lord, they are agents of the Department of Transport. Uma ukuluma nga ngoguti nga pam ngoguti unga niwa leo password kwa melu tole ingwati ukuluma nga nga ba ngomu pi umsebe nzige uti bako na abasebe nza yo ayikunga abasebe nza jenga ma agent wa yo inati. 
like for example for my lord the post office is also heavy the system so the post office they will write a letter to the department that uh, we hereby apply for the access for this individual or official as you'll be working and assisting members of the public with the renewal of a <coughs> motor vehicle license disc they say yeah yeah now we are showing with the post office you are not in general but it would yes bands and i know lenatis and what he says about who uma bio lunisa ama in what zap was a map is a map paper way moto now but what made a baby now you know what they are from my lord even members of the south african police service they have to undergo the same process and procedure in order to obtain access nama poisa again now but what made by a buyo lo lelo Lelung la lebule so skolo la yugu tibo na baya ba fundisa uguze bagwazi uguba na yo leo password norma uguze bagwazi kusebe nzisa le system ya Is it certified my lord? Yes, thank you And Have you been granted access to the NATIS system? Yes my lord, I have direct access to the system when I go on the giveaway, if we are not liar, or go seven to say not to suit here, but thank you. Um, having set out that background, can I then ask you to turn to page one of the your affidavit that consists of 22 pages, paragraph three. I see again go page one and, and maybe just before that what type of information is stored on the NATIS system my lord the information that is stored on NATIS is the personal particulars will the NATIS system yini into a good yeah 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 for one up or OT you mean in one your moon to such as a sign name and initials Fernandez Bong on my initials, ID number, ID number, email address, email address, yake, agenda, no good to moon to espazan no more as Lisa, your residential address, ne Kelina La Sala corner, postal address, ne address, yako yako, you uma is in those postal way, and the locality of the jurisdiction where you perform your way, you license your motor vehicles. No good to license yako ye moto wena uya ye uye seven se gupi norma uye nze gupi uma uye ilungis. My lord, there is also, it also contain the vehicle information. Futi ya palwa no good to ye moto le uye seven se sayo itini. It also contain the uh, the register of all the driving license testing centers. Upa alwe futi na ma register wa ma driving license center wa onke. It also contain the name of officials that are authorized to access the system. Bese yona le natis iya asho no guti abuba ni abandu abane kunya ilo guti banga sibenzisa leo system. My Lord, it also contained the infringement notices that were issued by the traffic officers on the road. Because young and don't know if all of you know what he won't do. You want me to go. I'm a ticket. I'm a guy. I'm a guy. And just explain what is an infringement notice. My Lord, the infringement notice is commonly known as traffic fine. Then what the layer could man go. I know I should pick the lazy at the infringement notice. You want to have a ticket as what to allow you to go. You've mentioned all these details. What about the contact numbers? My Lord, the contact numbers of the, the applicant, they will also be uh, inputted on the, on the register. Manje ukulumile nga lolo nge lolo luasi. Ama nombonu womundu wona ayavela na utiyebo na wo ayavela. Now, what happens, for instance, if a transaction is performed at the driver's license testing center at any given time? My Lord, the uh, system at any given place. My Lord, the system has been programmed to leave the audit trail for any transaction that is be performed. Manjogwenza galani ge uma kuba nento ANZ wa yo 
kuleyo system noma kweyiphi indawo uthi leyo system izobonisa ukuthi kakade kwenziwani yenziwa ubani ekuphi okay. we can proceed to paragraph 3 of your first affidavit ngaya ke ku paragraph 3 can i read out my yes okay. my lord i was on duty on thursday 18th of november 2020 when i received a request letter dated 2020-11-18 through the email from the Office of the National Commissioner. I was requested to assist with regards to investigation on suspect motor vehicle status, including infringement notices as per Force Law Case 636 forward slash 10 forward slash 2014. Utigaya na waigate SM7 zini ngei 18th November 2020, now we to the email. to the my Lord, I was also requested to document my findings in terms of Section 212 of the Criminal Procedure Act, Act Number 77, Act Number 51 of 1977. As a direct result thereof, by virtue of my capacity as an investigator with the direct access to National Traffic Information System, which is NATIS, I, I hereby declare the following findings under Mr. Fiso Kuke Mtuli. The ID number is 86011561286. Based on the request of Colonel, Colonel Kilinda, as per Force Law Rask Case 636 forward slash 10 forward slash 2014. <laughs> Ngayo leo moto leo eguti uye wakubega wa penya manje ige yena utuole uluwa zingo fiso gute ntuli eguti uya pala na yo IIT namba yake leso stelo saskate esi tole kusuga u kolonel kininda ngetala i 63610 yaga 2014 Now where, where did you obtain that name as well as the ID number from? My lord, my, my lord the name will also contain in the letter that was submitted or uh, which was a part of the request forwarded to me. Igama leli ne ID number uzthole epi uti ngi zthole gule ya ngwa atilebe nga tengi pelwa uguti ngi penye nga le vika nga manga le omu. If I can then ask you to just turn to the second affidavit page yeah, 9 yeah. thereof. We affidavit yes be in page 9 <clears throat> Paragraph 5. Paragraph 5, my lord. Natis records indicate that ID number. You just read the, 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 the whole thing. Five point start at 5.1. 5.1. Yes. Okay. Uh, 5. It's a fee soap ID number 86011561206. Eight, six, zero, one, one, zero, five, six, one, two, zero, eight, six. My Lord, uh, Natis records indicate that this ID number belongs to F. Ntuli, he ran after referred to as an accused, and his cell phone number is 073-305-9202, and his address is 87 Dewey Street, Wedville, Benoni. The postal code is 1516. Manjai <laughs> Kuche ntuli yena ID number yake ya vela lapo futi na manomolo wachi watu ingo ya vela lapo Ikeli lake ufiso kuche ntuli kutuwa waega tesala e number 87 Dube Street e Watville e Pinoni Postal code ya kwa 1516 And where did you obtain these particulars? My lord, these particulars I obtained them from the computerized register which is NATIS Manje, nolua ziwe na ultata api la guvela i nombolo yote ingo no, nekeli utingiz tate gule system ACB za inatis. Uh, are you able to go into the system now to, to show those particulars? Uh, 
My Lord, if I will be given a moment, let me try to log in to the system. See my lot is <coughs> twenty one past eleven. Will this be an appropriate no, time no, to take the shot? So we have enough time in the morning. Thank you. What I'm doing here, my lord, is that I'm going to input the ID number of the accused. Okay. In doing so, yes, I learned that we can't do no good things. So far, I know more than you. As this, so I can um solo. Just, just recite it so that everybody can hear it. Otherwise, we'll have problems to say you put in an ID. We don't even know who it was. So if you can also put on record the name of the okay, person. Okay, the name of the accused is Fiso Kuten Tuli. The ID number is 86011-0561-2086. Manje, uti uzo faga ge e ID number ya ke ufiso kuten tuli ID number 86011-0512086. My lord, the system, the way it has been programmed that there is a menu for each and every transaction that you want to conduct on the on the system. The system is there now. Galen the seven zanga kona. Kune zinle na eguti iya e islandelele. Uyo yonge indo ofunu we seven zanga. Uyo. So if you want to check the person's particulars, you merely go to Natis Transaction Five Five One, as it shows, as indicated on the, the top left. Bese uma ingabe ufuna uwasi wano mwendu kuya unatis 551 Then it says person is queen Bese iyasho uguti logo niloyo uye na ugu uwasi ugu kunela uwasi na aye My lord if I query this person there will also be an audit trail on the system that I did the query on the 20 seconds around 24 past 11 
So now I'm just going to press enter so that I can able to access these personal particulars. These are his personal particulars and the personal address. Can you just put them on record? Uh, my Lord, if I, can, if I may start from the, from the top left, it says the identification type. Uh, this simply means that when he was transacting on the system, he produced the, the Republic of South African ID. The ID number will also be on record as 86011056120086. If you check on the next row, they say, on the far left, it says persons particulars. The nationality of this person is the South African. Gender is male. Say name is Ntuli. Initials is F. The full names were not were supposed to be have been typed, but here it was not typed. But not from time to time when you apply uh, for services at the Department of Transport, there is a form that is issued to you. So from time to time the, you will see that a, a blog which says official language of preference. So so here his official language of preference is English. Sorry, sorry, for my, for my appreciation. This information is, is supplied by the person himself. Yes. If he says Corsa, then it will be captured as, as such. And if you say Zulu, it will be captured as such, my lord. Shangan, it will be captured as such, my lord. English, it will be captured as such, my lord. Right. And how is this information furnished? Online, in person, or what is the position? Well, now, let me just give you an example that you want to apply for a learner's license. When you, when you approach the, uh, the appropriate graded driving license testing center, Immediately when you, uh, when you arrive, they ask you to produce your acceptable identification. Once you produce your acceptable identification, you will then be issued with a form marked LL1. In that form, part A, they want you to fill in your personal particulars. <laughs> Lolo Lazi, Nil Tola, Nil Tola Nina Guma computer norma, Umundu ya figure, Uti, Msambo, Mutu Manga, the Efuna of Faga is Pedro Sobane, Lenas, Lomundu, Loma, a figure, a department, Yama Poisa, Yama traffic, Yena, Yuya Niva, a form A, and Alvisa, U L L one, Ilen form A, Utilia, Gualiswa, Gemba, Utu Mundu, Segabani, the Umazi Swat. A lot on that part A of personal particular, you are expected to complete your ID number, your full names, your postal address, your physical address, as well as your contact number. Kolala pobule no form uge uya telwa ugutu ufage ikamalab, sbongo sapo, ID number yako, 
ne keli la la usla la kona ne keli elizo sechenzi swa umainga be uzotingo kuto upose lo izinto as well as the language of preference no limi ewe na ufisa ubuti li sechenzi swa Thank you, my lord. My lord, I'm, I'm continuing on the screen. Uh, the registering authority where he was transacting or where he was making an application, he is identified as Binoni. Okay. And the locality of the record is also Binoni. My lord, in this case, it simply means that if you need to retrieve a file of this accused, you need to approach the Binoni registering authority. And can you just maybe clarify what was this application for? My lord, My Lord, the accused has already been holding a driving license, C1 driving license. Mm. Yes. Okay. So, if I'm, I'm continuing with the screen, the date of change of address, this simply means that the address was changed in 2011-0905. Uh, the status of the person it shows that is still active. <coughs> My Lord, his date of birth is also there as 1986-0110. Uh, cell phone number is 073-305-9202. The local authority is still be known. That is the system also asking that this person is allowed to move or merge or restricted, but here it says it's allowed to move or merge. The person features date here, my lord, is 2011-0905. <coughs> the verification of address particulars here shows that you know. While we are still on the screen, my lord, we go to the last row. Uh, the next row, not the last row, the next row, which says, or the, in the file left, it says, persons address particulars. <laughs> the information that was provided by accused as postal address is 87 Dewey Street, Waiteville, Benoni. <laughs> The postal code is 1516. The street address is the same as the postal code, postal address. Which is 87 Dewey Street, Waiteville, Benoni. The postal code is 1516. Uh, on the last row, my lord, it says other alias for the person entity. Uh, 
in this case, is not there is nothing because the person is a is a is a South African. That, that, that is the head ballot. Thank you. Right. If I can then ask you then to return to um, affidavit page two. The, the first affidavit consisting of 22 pages, paragraph A. Okay. I see again we affidavit Yako, page two. Uh, my Lord, the National Traffic Information System. Notice records indicate that an infringement in the bracket is handwritten notice number 01 00 11 00 6 was issued to the alleged infringer and the motor vehicle identified below. Manjege Lana Biabonisa Uti Buye Baba Netigi Ebelga del Nibel Lomundu. If it says handwritten, what does that mean? If it is handwritten, my lord, it simply means that your traffic officer stopped you along the public road. Manjege, Lana and Jemoba Iti, Ipan, when you stand up, Kazuki, Nebutua, Amapoisa, Wamquato, Iowak Mesa, Mkatoe, and issue you with the infringement notice, which is commonly known as the traffic ticket. Yes, you may proceed. Okay. My Lord, the particulars of the alleged infringer are as follows. Side <coughs> in in and initials is Mtuli F. Is born on my initials, Munduli F. Gender is May. Muntu is Lisa. ID number is 86011056121086. The ID number is AIK, we are sure over to 86 the cell phone number is 073-305-9202. The number is 073-305-9202. The and where would this particular have been derived from? My Lord, when you are stopped and you are supposed to be issued with the infringement notice, uh, the traffic officer will first uh, uh, request their driving license. So your driving license contains your ID number is the and the traffic officers go to you make use of that ID number to trust and input it on the the handwritten notice but when it comes to the address the traffic officer as well as the contact number the traffic officer will ask you what is your address then you provide the address the reason of asking the traffic officer to ask you the address is because they also want to remind you with this notice that you need to pay it Manjege Loluazi U Baza Bebal Twala Amapoisa Uti Amapoisa Mabek Misa Mkakweni Bazo Tela I license Yako Lai Uti Uyaba Niga Bese I license Yona ine kama ine inama initials wako in the spongo forty even the normal loyako yolazi so bona ye base batela ukeli loako is is that so good batela ukeli lako uguti baza bawa kubuza and the cell number? They are also asking you your cell number. So who finishes the cell number? In this case, my lord is an accused. Yes, you may continue. Uh, the particulars of the motor vehicles uh, that are linked to the infringement notice are shown uh, are shown below. My lord, the license number is BP, which is Bravo Papa 88 Romeo Hotel GP. 
imoto lena ye in number plate ya corner it bp bp eight eight r h gp the engine number is cubic yes. or it's, it's fine um we will we will come to that should it become necessary um, you have certain annexures attached to your second affidavit. Is there a relevant annexure for this infringement notice? Uh, in this case, my Lord. If I can ask you to turn to MCC3. 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 Yes, my lord. Oh, on annexa MCC 03 is the infringement notice that was issued at the time. Thank you. If I can ask you then to turn to page 3 of your affidavit, paragraph B. The first affidavit, the second affidavit. The, the, the first affidavit. I'm sorry. I see a group page three. The affidavit, Yako. I'm there, my lord. Yes. I'll just put that on record. Okay. My lord, the notice records reveal that the above mentioned alleged infringer, while operating the above identified motor vehicle on a public road situated in the city of Johannesburg, or the street A identify as Cleveland. Or date and time is 14 July 2013 at, 12, at 10 to 1 in the afternoon. Uh, I've noted a, a, a typing error there. I said she, instead of he, uh, okay. was stopped and issued with infringement, which is a handwritten notice, number 01-0011-0029. Four double zero three seven dash six by traffic officer identifies as B Matsila. The officer infrastructure number is four nine five one two eight C four, and the traffic officer was attached to JMPD issuing authority on the date in question. My Lord, I'm seated here and wondering if. Uh, I'm actually able to follow the testimony of this witness here. Maybe because the state is always uh, ready to read the provisions from the Criminal Procedure Act. I'll request the state to read the provisions of Section 210 of the Criminal Procedure Act. Maybe that will give this court, my colleagues and myself, a bit of a clue I'm as to the, the nature of this. I'm following the evidence. Everything, even when he briefs, I'm following. As it please the court, my lord. Then let me go specific to my reason why I'm standing. Up. They say they don't understand what your witness is saying. In other words, I'm I'm saying, my lord. Let me go briefly to the reason why I'm standing up. <coughs> this trial is about the scene or the incident that took place for Slurries the date on which is the 26th of October, 2014. This is what this trial is, I mean, this court is seized. Mr. Mr. I cannot, sorry. Uh, uh, yes, my lord. You can't tell the state how to lead its evidence. If it starts 1652, when John van Rydia came here, yes. we don't know where he's going to. That is the Because reason. let me tell you, you know, this trial is so, is so prolonged. Because people don't want to admit even the obvious. Just wait. I mean, like, uh, that's what I was asking you. Didn't you guys have a pre-trial? Like, for instance, if you understand that there is an electronic system called NATIS, and this is how it functions, once the state tells you we've got your client's particulars here, which were printed through the electronic system of NATIS, yeah. you admit this thing, all of you. Now we must read all this, which is so obvious to me again, anyway. Let me try to assist on that, my lord. Mm. Probably it would have been very prudent for the state, immediately the court asked that to request an adjournment, approached us.
find out whether we cannot meet each other halfway to reduce what is happening here. Because precisely that's my point. My point is all that is happening here is now irrelevant in respect of the charges that these accused persons are facing. Uh, uh, and that is encapsulated sorry. in terms of Section 210 of the Criminal Mr. Procedure Act. Maybe it will be an opportune wait, wait, time, alone to adjourn, Mr. discuss the matter, and find out whether can't we really meet each other halfway in order to reduce what is happening here. Mr. Siban and Mr. Baloui, they say all that you are leading here is irrelevant. <laughs> irrelevant. <laughs> Section 210 says, the relevant evidence should yes. not be led, neither evidence which yes. won't contribute to the solution or the proof or the yes. verification of the accident which is adduced. Uh, that is why, my lord, at the beginning I tried to address the court, yeah. so to show the relevance of the evidence, okay. and, and they then objected. Now they say they don't understand the relevance of the evidence. Yeah. If only uh, they let's, gave let's me continue, the Mr. As a court Anyway, listen to me. Is it irrelevant, like Mr. No, no. Nisi is saying it's irrelevant? No, no, it's, it's, it's relevant, my lord. I've indicated that the, okay. the cell numbers will tie up with the evidence of Lieutenant Colonel State. As it please the court, my lord. I find it very irrelevant to need evidence. No, no, Mr. Nisi, you're um, wrong, you're wrong. Please, please. I'm, you, I'm, can't, I'm, you can't make a statement that this evidence is irrelevant. When the person who adduces that evidence says it is relevant, you, the onus is on you thereafter to show that it was irrelevant by cross examination. No problem. May, by may, cross examination, you can show that this is irrelevant. But I can't stop Mr. Baloi and Sibande leading this evidence when they tell me that it is relevant, it is in proof of what their case. The, or the charge sheet is about. May I, may I, my lord, hmm? request an indulgence just to finish what I've started. <coughs> I'm saying it is relevant in the following sense. These charges that all these persons are, uh, that these accused are facing here, they've got <coughs> nothing to do with traffic uh, offenses. I don't know. I don't know. It is there in the indictment, my lord. I don't and, know. In, and also in the summary of no, the substantial no. facts. No, no. I, I'm overruling that. Overruling it. The, the state court. says it's relevant. Yes. He said he was enunciating why he is saying this evidence should be led is to link this and this and that and that and that. And then Mr. Ramasipi stood up and said, hey, this guy is reading evidence now. He's now testifying. And Mr. Baloy says he was trying to do that exit. Ex <laughs> that. Uh, exercise yes, in ma order to show how this witness's evidence links to the charge, whatever charge. Is that what you are saying? Indeed, my lord. I can't stop him. Thank you, my lord. I will respect the court's order. I can't stop him. Thank you, my This is not at all about the infringement notices. It's about the information yes. that was given by the person who was stopped by a traffic officer. That's the simple fact of the matter. Well, amongst other things, and. I mustn't be accused of giving evidence. Yes. When you were resuscitating and enunciating, enunciating how you intend linking, you pertinently mentioned that the defense of accuse number one is that he was not in Gauteng. Yes, indeed. And then etc. 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 You are going to show that he was in Gauteng. When he says from 215 etc. etc. he was in Gauteng, he was way, 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 way. Can you, can you proceed? Okay. Hey. Indeed, my lord. Um, you can continue, sir. Uh, uh, I understand that the court, my lord, is referring to the fact that Mr. Baloi, when he indicated at the beginning, um, it was about accuse number one. But as this witness is testifying, he's referring to accuse number five, Mr. Ntuli. Accuse number one is Mr. Sibir. No, no, no. He actually said his, the evidence of this witness is yes. in relation to all the accused. Did you say that, sir? <laughs> Indeed, my lord. Hey, man, that's, uh, that's Thank not you, my time. lord. Thank you. I just wanted to clarify. Ah, next. Can you turn to page five of exhibit, um, the, the first statement, page five, paragraph H? Okay. I'll see you page five, paragraph H. Page five. Uh, <coughs> It's page 5, paragraph 8 okay. of the first affidavit. 
Uh, my Lord, Netis records indicate that Mr. Fiso Uten Tuli, ID number 86011056121086, was issued with infringement, uh, which is the handwritten notice number 01 00 11-01-01-64-68-99-0-0 by a traffic officer identified as MJ Stofield. Yes, attached to? The officers attached to JMPD issuing authority. Yes. MJ Stofield Osebenzela EJMPD. Yes. The particulars of the infringement are shown below. Uh, it indicates that uh, on a sign name is Ntuli, uh, initials is F. The ID number is 86011056121086 and the, la the license code that he holds is C1 and his contact number is 073-3059202. The address? The address is 872 Street, Waiteville, Bidon. The postal code is 1516. <laughs> A Guti Lia Shonogu, the Palin, Namanombo, watch what they know, the Nombo Yaki Ozaziso, Besege Gua Palwa, Neke Lilake, a who eight seven two best read a what will be known. And the motor vehicle particulars? And the, and the motor vehicle particulars, uh, it, it, here it shows that it was attached, affixed with the temporary permit number EKG six one five GP. And the description of the vehicle is Volkswagen hatchback. The service number is not captured here, but the color of the vehicle is white. Kutiwage imoto ebegate ehamangayo untuli kwakate kui imoto ye VW. Eguti akupalwangage uguti nfogo yini ye VW. Kutwa yona egate imsope ugombala. Yes. And the date of the infringement? The date of infringement, my lord, is the 2nd of February 2016. But I get it, like he it to February 2016. If I can ask you then to turn to page 6. Paragraph K. Paragraph K. My Lord, National Traffic Information System, Netis Records, further indicate that an infringement notice number 01-0011-0168-163-848 was issued to Mr. Fisokutri Ntuli, ID number 86011-056-12086 by traffic officer identified as M.A. Mudisani. The officer is also attached to J.P. <coughs> issuing authority. <coughs> Bonisalana Ubuti Futi Undulu Yawanuga Tigeti Ebegate Enigua U M A Mudisana Naya Usebenza U J M P D. Page seven, if you can just turn to page seven. Just put only the name of the uh, driver, the address, cell phone number and the particulars of the vehicle and the date of the infringement. <coughs> Uh, no, the, the surname of the infringer is Ntuli and initials is F. The ID number is 86011056121086. The license code is C1. The address is 87 Juve Street, Waiteville, Benoni. The postal code is 1516. The uh, <coughs> phone number is 073-305-9202. The, the motor vehicle particulars in question is the license number here is CT 79YZGP. It's a, also a hatchback. Uh, here it's a, it's a, it's a tear of, of the vehicle, it's 1570, and it's a Volkswagen uh, series is VW 250 Polo. The color here is gray. 
Nanaye uyafunda imininingwana yakhe UF mtuli bese ke ufunda nemininingwana yemoto ukuthi wa imoto kakade ku VW ebekade i gray yona i number plate ya khona ebekade ithi CT 79 YZ GP yona leo moto wakade ku VW e gray you mentioned in paragraph H that this was also a handwritten notice. In other words, where a person was stopped by a traffic officer. <coughs> and, and the information regarding the cell phone number and address, who would have, where would that information have it's come it's from? It's furnished by my lord by the motorist. Manje imininingwa na ukfana no nombo do yote ingo na kedi lona litatwa pi kutoa umundo oshaya daleo moto uye na ozo niga amapo isaleo imininingwa. Are you able to go into the system just to check the color of the, this particular vehicle? Mwana zobi ya mshikini kuchele kuchumbala waleo moto wakati kujani. Yes, my lord, I'm looking in. Uh, my lord, like I've already explained that on notice immediately when you logged in, there's a menu for each and everything transaction that you want to perform. But simply because uh, I was requested to check the color of the vehicle, uh, then I'll go to the first menu, which is a uh, motor vehicles. <laughs> Then I simply press one and press enter. Then I press one and press enter. 
Then if you can check from 12, 14, 15, 16, on the 16 it says queries. Then I'll go to a uh, one six four. One six four, which or if you can check on the top top left, it says one six four motor vehicle all owners query. Then I'm going to input the license number which is CT79 YZGP. CT79 YZGP. Well, look, if you can check the from the bottom, it says last number, it says no record that match the search criteria were found. So okay. So then I'm going to check it on the previous as a previous license number under option five. CT79 YZ GP. My Lord, because I've, the menu that I've, I've selected says motor vehicle owners queries. It, it will first show you all the, the owners from the bottom to the top. But because our is, our interest is on color, I'm simply going to press enter to check the color of this vehicle. And, and also perhaps just the particulars of the make of, of the vehicle. My Lord, I've opened the, the, the page. Uh, for the purpose of record, the current license number of this vehicle is GPP 660 EC. not J. Is it J or G? C. J. J, J for Juliet. <coughs> J. J, J. Okay, fine. J P P. Yes, six six okay, zero C. Yes. The, the, the chassis number is A A V. No, no, it's fine. Just just the make of the vehicle. Okay. My lord, the make of the vehicle the color. Is, is Volkswagen. The series is V W two five zero Polo. The color is silver. Thank you. Thank you. If I can then ask you to <coughs> turn back to your affidavit on page seven. As we are page seven. Paragraph L. Uh, my lord, notice records reveal that the motor vehicle with the description as hatchback made Volkswagen series VW250 Polo with license number CT79YZGP silver in color. The lawful title holder on the date in question was BMW Finance Services. The notice business registration number of is 9004670702228. And the lawful owner was Nakoma Fleet and Shuttle. Natis Business Registration Certificate Number is Z0912429201313. The full particulars of the previous owner and the current owner of the license number CT79YZGP, which is currently changed to JPP660EC, are shown on page 8 of, okay. of 22.
Mandege lana kia boni sage uguti imoto lena IVW ipolo legu kunyangayo inombo plate ya kona gu CT79 VY le esilva ngombala Umnigazu wayo ngale suskati kwa kate kui BMW Finance Service Laba abasizayo umawumundu efaga istelo sayi mali Besege Ya bona gala futi noguti abanigazi njengo baya igati isiwe kwa BMW abanigazi bayo kwa kate guba na koma fleet and shuttle eguti ba ushishi ni nabo besege bona gala noguti abanigazi ababu abakala kwa kate bayo leo namba plate UCT79 VYZ YZGP kwa kate Le ese ishinji we manje ishinje logu JPP 660EC Kuya bonaga la uguti kukona kukufagazi Uma kukube wabui wabu page 8 Now Mr. Matlo, the fact that the lawful owner at the time was Bana kwa mafit and shuttle Is that indicative of anything? But in this case it appears as if it was a rental company Manje nje waba iguti iti Aba nika zibakate guba na koma Fleet and shuttle Iko nito onga yisho uti Kupona kada inga chikwa kate mwa bantu Aba kashi sa ili mwa Thank you, that's all as far as the first affidavit is concerned If I can ask you then to turn to the second affidavit Sekate kulege nge affidavit yo kala Asiebe affidavit yes bini Page 2, paragraph 3.1 Page two. <coughs> My lord, I was on duty on Thursday, 14th of September 2023, and I received a request letter in the bracket, it's SAP 21, close bracket, from Brigadier PN Gilinda, an investigating officer attached to SAPS National Cold Case Unit, as per Force Case 636, forward slash 10, forward slash 23. <coughs> No, I've just noted that uh, I, I, I made a mistake here in 2023. It was supposed to be 2024, 2014. So, the September 2023. I to to Ten twenty fourteen got to Alana, Woti Wednesday, Ipota, Upale twenty thirteen. It's paragraph three point two. My lord, I was requested to assist in establishing the following. Yena Uye Wataywa Uti Aufune Ulwazi Oltize. Whether any of the below mentioned person ever applied for any license or driving license between the period of 2013 December to 20 to December 2014. Whether such documents were issued or not and on what dates Indicate the process of doing such application. Must the applicant be physically present at the testing station to do such or not? Any other activity you can pick up around the above period, insofar as the details is provided. Any renewal of vehicle license by any of the below listed persons in and around Boxbed area in particular. However, any other information will assist. Any documents like ID or any form of identification provided by any of the persons mentioned 
during the transaction, including the address and the contact details. Uh, the letter also provided me with the name of the accused. The, uh, the, the names are as follows. And the ID number. Muzika Kulelwa Stemba Sveya. Muzika Kulelwa Stemba Sveya. ID number is 86-01-21-59-33-083. Na yoye ID number njengwa ba iPhone. Fizo Kuche Ntuli. ID number is 86-01-1056-120-86. Fizo Kuche Ntuli ne ID number ya kiwe ya iPhone lapo. The other one is Mtoko CZ. Zipoko Zipozonke Mapisa. Nom Togo ZC Zipozonke Mapisa. The ID number for the purpose of record is 8510046202081. Now you get the ID number Yake Um Togo ZC Zipozonke Mapisa. Bongani Santiso Ntanzi. Bongani Santiso Ntanzi. ID number is 9012026197083. Toby C. Prince Mnube. ID number is 85040360580. May I proceed, my Yes, Lord? yes, paragraph 4. My Lord, my Lord, in compliance with the request, I directly access notice and search for the requested information. And I'm satisfied that the requested information that I found on notice affects and transaction that have been registered or recorded on notice in terms of section 77 of the National Road Traffic Act for the purpose of the said act. Then I further check the Muzika Kulelwa Stemba Sevea with ID number 8601215933083. Netis records, my lord, indicate that an ID number 86012159 belongs to MS Sevilla, referred to as an accused, and his cell phone number is 0820662705, and his street address is Sutu Hostel, mm -hmm. N43, Postal Code is 1459. postal code Are you able to go into the system to show these particulars? I know if you can check go on the screen. As I've indicated that there's menu for each and every transaction that you do on Netis. Yeah, because you want to check the personal particulars of the accused, you will simply go to number five. Which is five five one as shown on the far left as person query. Five, five, one, 
I'm now going to input the ID number of the accused on the on the uh, space provided. We are the ID number. Yeah, you Eight six zero one two one five nine three three zero eight three. Then I will press enter. Then the information will appear. My ID number. My total end of the Yes, can you just put uh, the name, the cell number, and the street address? Hello, the cell name is Sevilla, and the initials is MS. The full names are not captured here, but only the initials. The date of birth is 1986-0121. The cell phone number provided is 082-066-2705. The postal address is Sutu Hostel, N43 Fosloras. The postal code is one four one five nine. The postal code is one four five nine. Thank you. You can then um, revert to your affidavit. Page four. You are on paragraph four point one point three. Ngabuyana yego affidavit ya kubu paragraph four point one three. Malot on the seventeenth of July, twenty fourteen. At 12 23 seconds, Netis records as shown on page one of Annexure MCC 01. We are July, our record now. Are you sure? Indicate that a Netis transaction 706, which in the bracket is a record pre booking was performed on the accused ID number 86012159303083. Yeah, so the Ubuti Uye Wabano Uti Um Solwa Yena Afade Istelo, so Buti Udina Ilanga. A Natis transaction 706 allow the pre-booking of driving license and learner's license. System Yona Yeam Bumela Ubuti Gumasle Kufu Kiwe Apukele I license norma in learners. In other words, applicants are allowed to fold the relevant call center of the driving license testing center, which is the DLTC, and a make telephonic booking. The call center or the DLTC will initiate the booking. But no payment will be made and reserve and the reserve the reserve the session. But to a yiko imali is of hope, basic uya uya nigwa normal lelo langalia trinwa. My lord, the recorded pre-booking of the said accused is related to Elena's license code three application as shown on page two of annex MCC zero one. Leo gave the Kate Bukunua Gutu by the Father Estrello, Sayo I'm going to input the ID number of the accused. Which is of the ID number yeah, is so uh, 86012159333083. And I'm going to specifically on this date, on the 17th of July, 
Yeah, if you can check, my lord, on the top right, it says CA12, query audit information per person entity. I'm going to the, the bottom one where, where it says record pre booking. And I'll, and I'll press enter on it to check who was assisting the accused. Here it shows that the official that was assisting the accused is RJ Mokwatsani. It also shows the, the transaction type which is a record pre-booking. It also showed the office where the pre-booking was, was made, which in this case is Pragpan. It also showed the computer workstation which the official was using. If you go to the to the bottom row where it says the reference, it shows the booking reference number as four zero one zero 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 G four three five. It also say first available appointment reserved indication says no. My lord, if, if, if I go further and press it under, enter on the same menu, it shows the DLTC infrastructure number where the applicant was assisted. And the lessons and the learner's lessons test type code which the applicant applied. In this case it's code three. And which code is that? A code three, my lord, it allows you to drive motor vehicles that exceed three thousand five hundred kilograms. A commonly known uh, co a driving license code such as C1, EC, but they commonly known as code 14. And it also, also shows the, uh, here it shows the learner's license booking date. In this case, the applicant was was given in 2014-0722 at Ted Law. The learner's license booking date made made date is on 2014-0717. When you go to the bottoms where it says learner's license test features, it says booking unconfirmed. In this case, it simply says that the, the accused was int intended to write a learner's license on the 22nd of July 2014. 
But a payment has not been made yet to confirm the, the date. If I go back, my Lord, to page 242, uh, there is another transaction that is performed on the set day. I'm going to click on it just to see what was happening here. In this case, my lord, the applicant was confirming the date which was, uh, which was provided to him when he was doing the pre-booking. Uh, and just explain pre-booking, what, what, what is that? Pre what, does, what does it mean? Okay, pre-booking, you simply reserve the space to write an analysis on a certain date. And, and how is it done online, in person, or what is the position? Uh, you are allowed to approach the uh, the the, uh, the driving license testing center, or you, are, you can call. At the time, remember it was in 2014. At that time, you were allowed to walk in or call. Manje, umuntu waiga te enza njani ubuze a fagi sana leso. Chelo uti uga kwa fanga leso skati kwa kati kwa 2014. Muntu waiga te enga vunyelo ubuti angangena norma angate asha yote. Yes. Okay. Uh, furthermore, when I press, I just wanted to check the press, press the enter to check the different of times of pre-booking and the date in which he confirmed the booking. My Lord, I'm checking the difference of time here. It simply says that the applicant went in person. Because the time in which he confirmed the booking is 12.45.33. And the pre-booking was made in 12.33.33. Furthermore, my lord, what I've noted is that the workstation or computer that the applicant was confirmed with the booking is not the same that the one that was used when he was doing a pre-booking. Even the official that was assisting him to confirm the, the booking is not the same that, that was assisting him to, to conduct, to, to, to reserve the pre-booking. Because the one who confirmed, the official that confirmed, who listed the money is identified as M.I. Hendrik. And the one who assisted him to reserve the date is R.G. Mokwetsani. Yes. You, you can then proceed from where you left off on okay. your affidavit. Okay. Paragraph 4.1.5. Paragraph 4.1.5. Okay, thank you. My Lord, on the 17th of July 2014, at 12.45, 30 seconds, Natis records as shown on page 3 of Annexia MCC01. History of an extra MCC zero one. Gay seventeen Ziga July, we are born again. I get a booty. This is the year about year. I am born in San Diego, is London. Live history of an extra indicate that Natis transaction seven two one, which is an application for less Lena's license, was performed on the accused ID number eight six zero one two one five nine double three zero eight three zero eight three. 
Utige kwa 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 isto elo sayo Ipenas license Ule nombolo Yoza zisu my lord, a notice transaction 721 is used to record an application for a learner's licenses. Leo, lapho ye kuya ye kutelwe ukuthi umuntu ufaka isicelo sokuthi abukelwe i learner's license. The official that initiated and concluded this notice transaction 721 on computer workstation ID 4319004 at Ragban DLTC is identified as M.I. Hendrix with Natis user number 4010A04Z. Umuntu uge owigutu uye wasebenza kuleo computer obega de esiza no muntu ye na waega de ese pragban u M.I. Hendrix. Mano, Natis record further indicate that the set accused may, has made a cash payment of 108 rand for learner's license application and he was issued with receipt number Four one four zero one triple zero four five JK eight Y as shown on page four of Annexia MCC zero one. Put it again, but I got a good to um solo. We were Hoka Mali Elemana no hundred and eight rand one. You got near receipt. My lord, a netis transaction seven two one can only be performed if the applicant has been authorized to undertake a learner's license test. And the applicant is compelled to make an application in person as prescribed in section 17 and regulation 103 of national road traffic act 93 of 1996 as shown on page 5 of annexure mcc01 my lord if i may be allowed to read out section 17 of the uh, National Road Traffic Act where it says application for, a, for an issue of learner's license on Annexia MCC 01 page 5. Yes, we can go ahead. You can go ahead. Okay. It, uh, it reads as follows, subsection 1. Subject to the section 24 a person desiring to obtain a learner's license shall in person apply therefore in prescribed manner to an appropriate graded driving license testing center. Uh, subsection 2. Upon receipt of an application in terms of subsection 1, the driving license testing center concern shall, if it is satisfied from the information furnished in the application or from such further information as such center may reasonably request that the applicant is not disqualified from obtaining a learner's license. Determine a day and a time at which the applicant shall present himself or herself to be examined and tested by the examiner for driving license in a manner and in respect of matter as prescribed. Lapa aya kwa na gule o department banga shibatele mini ni wana yake Uguze babwa zubu mfumela uguti angapana ilena's license njengoba umteto ushonja It's fine, you don't need to read any further Is, is, is there um, perhaps a form that has been completed? When My lord, the form that is completed is marked an uh, application for learner's license which is LL1 yes. And is there a reason why the person must report or appear in person to apply for a learner's license? My Lord, there is a reason for that because you need to make a declaration that you are not suffering from fainting due to hypertension. You also have to make a declaration as well that you don't suffer from any diseases that may render you to be incapable capable of driving or controlling a motor vehicle, which might be a risk to other motorists. My Lord, you are also subjected for an eye test. And you must also make a declaration that you are not suffering from 
uh, not suffering or addicted to the use of drugs having nicotine effect. And that you are not suffering from the excessive use of intoxicating liquor. And that you are not prohibited to apply for learner's license or driving license by reason of any disqualification. You must make also make a declaration that you are not suffering from uncontrolled diabetes and uncontrolled epilepsy and that you are not suffering from any form of mental illness which require you to be detained or supervised or controlled and be admitted as a patient in terms of Mental Health Act number 18 of 1973. Then if the, if the station is satisfied that you, you don't fall into that category, a date and a time for you to be write learners' lessons will then be issued to you. And you also need to make a, a declaration that you realize that furnishing a false information will amount to a fine or one year increment or both. Thank you. You can proceed to page six, paragraph four point one point eight. I see again to page six, paragraph four point one point eight. Page six. Yes. Yes. Page six, paragraph four point. 4.1.8 4.4.1.8 4. 4. 4. 1. Okay Marot <coughs> A notice record as shown on page 6 of Annexure MCC 01 indicate that the said accused was authorized to undertake a learner's license test on 22nd of July 2014 and his test results were recorded as fail at Prag 1 driving license testing center by the examiner for driving license identified as Zulu T with the initials TPC with Natis infrastructure number 4951 2BCW. Manjaga and you've attached the relevant annexure, page yes, 6 yes, on yes. MCC 1. Yes, if we may go to page 6 of annexure MCC 01, my lot. If we check from the uh, top, from the top, it says the learner's particulars. Name is Sibia MS. The identity type that he provided is a RSA ID document. The ID number is 86012159330. The Lenas License Testing Center particulars. Infrastructure number is triple zero one one double eight six, which is Pragpan DLTC. The next row it shows it, say, it shows the learner's license test particulars. Here it, it says learner's license code, it says motor vehicle excluding a uh, MC. Then 
In, in this case, it simply means that the, the, the last license code that he applied qualifies him to drive any motor vehicle except a motorcycle. In Lapo Kazuguti, Imoto, Yena, Ufagi, Istrelo, Sugutanga, Shaila, Noma Yip, Imoto, Bapanda was two two. The test date that was confirmed is 2014-0722. The test time is 11 past 10. The, the test time is, is the test time that he finished to write is 10.55. Yeah, uh, his test results were recorded as fail. The learner's license test number which was provided to him when he was applying for an application of learner's license was 401-00010-D435. On the next row, it indicates the examiner particulars who was conducting yes. the class. Yes, you don't need to read that into the record. Okay. And there's also the points that you obtained in the different categories. Yes, my lord. My lord, if you can check on the categories, the rule on the rules of the road, there are 30 questions. So he managed to score only 13 and the pass rate is 22. On the road traffic side, there are 30 questions. Uh, here he managed to score 18. Unfortunately, the pass rate is, two, is, two, is 23 points. On the motor vehicle control, there are eight questions. In this case, he managed to get five. Unfortunately, the pass rate is six. Thank you. We can then revert back to your affidavit. Paragraph 4.1.9 on page six. Okay. My Lord, on the same day, on the same day, on the 22nd of July 2014, at 1355.09, Natis record as shown on page 7 of Annexia MCC 01 indicate that a Natis transaction 706, which is record pre booking, was performed on the accused ID number 8601215933083. The official that had initiated and concluded a Natis transaction 706 on computer workstation ID number 43160043 at Boxback DLTC is identified as. BP Melamo with Natis infrastructure number with Natis user number 4009A0J2. Nalo Lelo Langa, my Kata Bala, Ekata Ufeda, Uyewa, Faga, Istrelo, Uguti, Ufuna Ubala, Futi, Kona, U Leso Trello, Usfagan Gate 22, Ziga July 2014, was Sizwa UBP Molamu, Ebegate SA Box Bank. You've just put in record that the date on which he undertook the learner's license was 22 July 2014 in Breckpan DLTC, but at the, on the same day, 22 July 2014, an appointment was made at the Bosbeck DLTC. What does that signify? Uh, after he realized that he failed, my lord, he didn't want to give up, so he proceeded to the, near, to the nearest driving assistance testing center to make a further application. Manjo Gushutin in Jangoba Uti Ubale, a box bag, a box bag, a pragban, go to a less fellow Sifawe, a box bag. Uti, Jango Mundo begat the epata of Fayda Yena Waigat, the Engas Esmisele, 
azange afunde ukuthi alahlele ithawela uye waqhubeka waya kwi stage eseduze ukuze ayofaka isicelo sokuthi angabhala futhi and in which language was the learners license test in in, in Brekpan conducted on the 22nd July 2014 uh, uh, in this case, on the system is not captured because it was handwritten and as it was not computerized. Manje, ke kusetjen suelu ilimi ngales katibu bega tibu palwa le alenas license ya sepapano ti abu palwa ngoba kweka tibu palwa ngesanda ya ega tinga sejen tiswa ikompi. But are you familiar with the questions themselves, the categories that have mentioned, as to in which language they are couched? Uh, I know. There's also in Africans and in English. I'm not sure about other languages. But what we have now, we can only hear you say things like, "Let me put you as a good Japanese speaker." Japanese Africans, we sing this. Others in Alamani, Aman. Yes, you can proceed. My Lord, the recorded pre-booking of the set accused is related to a last license code three application. As shown on page 8 of Annexia MCC01. On the 22nd of July 2014, at 7 past 2 in the afternoon, 42nd, a notice record is shown on page 9 of Annexia MCC01 indicate that a notice transaction 721 which is an application for learner's license was performed on the accused ID number 86012-159-3083. A notice transaction 721 is used to record an application for learner's license. The official that initiated and concluded this notice transaction 721 on computer workstation ID number 43160035 at Boxberg DLTC is identified as Z Sewana with notice user number Four double zero nine eight zero JZ zero. My Lord, the said accused has made a cash payment of 108 rand for learner's license application and he was issued with a receipt number 40090-1269-PT9 as shown on page 10 of Annexia MCC01. We have a copy of the 108 rand and we have a new receipt. My Lord, a notice transaction 721 can only be performed if the applicant has made authorized has been authorized to undertake a learner's license test and that the applicant is compelled to make an application in person as prescribed in section 17 and regulation 103 of the national road traffic act as shown on page 5 of annex mcc01 leso sicelo ke isicelo ukuthi siyafakwa uma umuntu ezimisele ukuthi uyobhala i learner's license ekuthi ishiwo umthetho sisekelwe Furthermore, a notice record as shown on page 11 of Annexia MCC 01 indicates that the said accused was authorized to undertake a learner's license test on the 2014-0915 and his test results were recorded as passed at Boxberg DLTC by the examiner for driving license identified as Nombek Treza ZZ with notice user number 4009A0CH. Futi gabo na gala uguti uye watubega futi utu nese iguti upalile nge 15 zika September 2014 ebega te epale e ilenas e iguti utu nese iguti uya ipasa la bega te eslon wa unombe teza ZZ. My Lord, if I may allow to go to an extra MCC zero on page 12, just to check how was the, uh, the, the coins that you acquired at Boxberg. Uh, for the purpose of record, my lord, from the top it says the learner's particulars, Sibia MS, uh, the identity type is uh, RSA, 
ID document. The ID number is 86012159 uh, The learner's license testing center particulars is infrastructure number is 014618 Boxback DLTC. Uh, on the next row, it shows the learner's license test particulars. The learner's license, part the, the learner's, the, the license code is motor vehicle. In the bracket, it says excluding motorcycle. The test date was on the 15th of September 2014. The test time was from 12 o'clock to 1 o'clock. The result is passed, authorized, and issued, meaning that the accused passed and the results were authorized and it was issued with the learner's license. The learner's license test number is 4009-00018-BG. B G M. The examiner who was conducting the class at the time, the examiner infrastructure number is 49512CS3. Uh, the name of the examiner is Nomberg Fraser ZZ. Uh, the learner's license test test category uh, particulars, my lord, if I just if if you were to check under the category of rules of the road, I have already indicated that there are 30 questions. So here he managed to score 23, and the pass rate is 22. The road traffic sign, there are 30 questions. He, he was able to score 27, and the pass rate is 23. The motor vehicle controls is eight questions, and he was able to take to, to, to get total, and the pass rate is six. <laughs> la yekuthi ne ID number ishiwo ubonisa ukuthi ubhale e box back waye kade e hlolwa u number Teresa ZZ ekuthi waye kade mhlolela yona i learner's license uye wayipasa la njengoba bese sikashilo u superintendent ukuthi kwakade kune mibuzo e30 yena uye wathola 23 ekuthi i pass rate kwe ku 22 yena kunibuzo e30 eminye landelayo yama sign womgwaqo uye wathola 27 wa ekuthi u pass rate kwa ku 22 futhi emiga ku ku exceptionseni we moto ube kate kune mibuzo A8 uye watola U8 a good pass rate kwa U6 Is there an indication of the language in which the test was conducted? It is not, there is no indication because it was a handwritten learner's license okay. not computerized Bia bona gala na ulu yemi ebelga del seven siwe la hapo utika abu uko la bona gala kwa na uoba kwa kate kwa 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 nge computer kwa kate kwa 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 nge sati Yes, you may proceed Uh, 4.1.16 on, on the 15th of September 2014 at 13.55.47 seconds Natis record as shown on page 13 of Annexia MCC 01 indicate that Natis transaction 722 which is the authorization of learner's license was initiated and concluded on computer workstation number 43160036 at Boxback GLTC by the official identified as ZC1 uh, with notice user number 4009A0JC. Uye kwa bona kala futhi ukuthi uZC1 yena uye wapha nangayo leo learner's license lebe kade ikhishwa e box. Malo the said accused has made a cash payment of 60 rand for issue of learner's license certificate and he was issued with the receipt number 4009012 6 as shown on page 14 of annexure MCC 01. Uwe itona leo Lena's license uye wakoka imali elingan ni 60 rand e iguti uye wakoka bamliga ni receipt. Natis record my lord further as shown on page 15 of Anexia MCC 01 indicate all the applicants that were examined for Lena's license testing on 2014 09 test time from 12 o'clock to one o'clock. Furthermore, my lord, a search was conducted for learner's license application form completed by the accused in 2014 as mentioned in Regulation 103 of the NRTA Act and it has not yet been found notwithstanding Section 78 Subsection 1 of NRTA 
states that a document purporting to be an extract from or a copy of or any register or record kept in terms of this act and purporting to be certified as such shall in any court and upon all occasion be admissible as evidence and shall be prima facie proof of the matter stated in such document without the production of the original register or record or any certificate, license, other document, microfiche, microfilm, or computerized record for, from of which such extract or copy was made. <coughs> Na so is Tello Leso, Essia Safawa, but to assist on his Tonagal Cotto, which you were born normal who people for us, the Obunaba corner, who has a surgeon, so in Candono, Jemo Bufaraz, the way with Tibona, who has a boo corner, forty, who has seven Ziswa, Jemoba, Mundu, I got the Fagales was trained. Thank you. That concludes then your testimony as far as MSCB is concerned. Uh, I also want to indicate, my Lord, that for the fact that uh, the file was not retrieved uh, uh, in, in relation to section 78 of subsection 1 of NRT, I did certify that the electronic information annexed to year 2 SMCC01 in relation to the accused effects and transactions that were registered or recorded on notice by authorized person in the ordinary course of business as prescribed by the provision of the National Road Traffic Act. Manje again, Jengo ba iguti faida is ange it all we. Ea ke umso lwa yogo tuwa ega te fage le sos treno futu ye wa tena se iguti ui tole le learner's license ye na uti uye wa tata bonke obe gate gupa lwe lapa uguti le so treno siye sa ye nziwa futi siye sa tatwa ugu yango mteto sisegelo obe gate gupa liwe lapa. Can you just put that page? Okay, it's the relevant pa page where you make this certification. Okay, the second affidavit, page 24 of 27. Under, under number 9. Paragraph 9. 9.1. 9.1. Okay. Right, we've already, uh, page 9, we've already dealt with Fisokush and Tuli. Perhaps when we return from the long adjournment, we can start at page 11, page paragraph 11. 6. Okay. In respect of Ntoko Zisi, Zipo Mapisa. Tuma Sibuya, Sizoya, page 9, Siye Boom, Togo Zisi, Zipo Zonge, Mapisa. Page 9. Page 11. Okay, oh, Okay, Yes. Yeah. almost time for the long agenda. Okay. Are we proceeding or are we? Are we what, proceeding? What time now? It's about two minutes to one. Yeah, let's come back at two.